So have you, did you get to go out to Sealand? Yeah. Uh, well, so what ended up happening was, uh, you know, of course they get bugged to, for visitors to be able to go out there like all the time. So I didn't, you know, I wanted to not like be that guy where the first thing I asked was going out there, but it just sure. so happened that when I was, um, you know, I went to the UK to do this research without, I was trying not to get my hopes up, um, in terms of being able to visit out there, but in speaking with them and then, uh, his sons came over one day to speak with me as well. And they sort of offhandedly were just like, Oh, did you want to go to Sealand by the way? And I was like, uh, yes, Hell actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it just so happened that, so they live about two hours away from the easiest port to get to Sealand. Um, mm -hmm. and we were going, uh, my girlfriend and I, who, who went with me, we were going to go to this small town about two hours away to do research anyway, and just stare at sea land from the horizon or from the shore. Cause you can see it on the horizon. Uh -huh. um, but also the caretakers who take care of sea land leave from there. And they were, I think two days after I met with um, the Prince Michael's sons was when they were switching out the caretakers. So they're like, by the way, if you go to this little town, you can catch a ride on this fishing boat out to sea land and it just all like happened to work out. And so, um, you know, I tried to keep my cool when I was talking with them, but again, that just like somebody was looking out for me there because it all just fell into place, uh, pretty readily, which, you know, obviously made the book a million times better and just, you know, lifetime ambition fulfilled for me. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I mean, after reading the book and, you know, learning about them so much, I mean, it's like going to Disneyland, you know, it's great. Yeah. For, yeah. I mean, you know, as I, I might've mentioned in the book, you know, it's like, I've been looking, studying this for so long that I could like kind of see the layout and like, you know, just felt like I knew the place, but of course being there is a totally different uh, experience altogether. But yeah, I mean, it was like stepping into a dream for sure. Right. Sure. Okay, well, we got, I think let's, we should dive into the story now because people, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, of course. I mean, I, I, there's, there'll be an intro on here. So people listening should know kind of the, the overall story, but let's, we're talking about all this stuff, but people don't even know it. So let's dive into it. Um, so, I mean, this all starts with, with a man named Roy Bates, right? Yeah, Roy Bates. Uh, and I wish I could have met him because he, he definitely is just this like, you know, character from like a bygone era, but he was a World War II vet. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog, Murphy, and these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats, and all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video, and this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat, all thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay, I believe you. You said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats. And all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there, pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button, subscribe to curiosity -ness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. We're all not very good.